We have a great show for you. We always have a great show for you. Today is a very special one, one that's very dear to my heart. What do you consider your public enemy number one? You know what I consider? Cancer. Cancer has taken so many wonderful people. The fight continues. One of the greatest fighters we have today is the American Cancer Society. My name is Vin DeQuino. Our guest today, Tracy Walsh, Janine Callahan, welcome. Thank you. you have yeah. been fighting the fight. Talk to me a little bit about who you are and what you do, Tracy. Well, thank you for having us. Well, thank you for being um, here. I, I have been a long time um, first volunteer and then employee, what we like to use the term staff partner uh, for the American Cancer Society. And uh, everyone associates me with the Relay for Life, but mm -hmm. today I really wanted to come on the show and thank you and talk about all the services that the American Cancer Society yeah, has. Know, as big as American Cancer Society is, a lot of people don't know too much about it, what exactly they do, and I think it's crucial that they know where you are and what sort of functions you, you're involved in. Right. Uh, the American Cancer Society is in every community mm. and um, we are here and want to be uh, the first point of contact and the place that families and individuals turn to when they hear that often devastating diagnosis, mm. you have cancer. Um, and we, we offer so many services and programs to help folks. And one of the initial things that we encourage everyone to do is to call our 24-7 hotline. So once a diagnosis has been made, the next step is pick up that phone and call your hotline. Well, yes, because very often you're overwhelmed. You, you go to your family. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to help but you have so many more questions than you have answers mm -hmm. at the beginning. And doctors can't always answer all the questions. Right. So this hotline, people get nervous about an 800 number. Yes. But I, I like to call this a, a helpline. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It is, and I'm going to say it several times, 1-800-227-2345. Say it again. 1-800-227-2345. And what happens when you call is that you will get a short recorded answer that says, if you have just been diagnosed or if you have questions about cancer, press this number. Oh. If you're calling about something else, you press another number. But if you're just diagnosed and you press that number, you go right we to... We have it on, on oh, screen. Oh, terrific. Thank you. Uh, you, so they can see it. you go right to a live individual who can help you with questions about your diagnosis. And these are people who are trained to answer your questions. People who have answers that you don't have. Correct. And they are people who are not only trained to answer your questions, they are trained to be empathetic. Oh. They are actually... And you need it at that time. It's, uh. Uh, it's, it's, another, it's another set of ears. And it's a very honest set of years. Sometimes you call the hotline and you have 10 questions. And they answer four right away. They say, we're going to get you over to a clinical specialist to answer another couple. And they say, oh, that's an insurance question. I'm going to pass that along to our insurance advocates. Yeah, that's, yeah I, I mean, those are some scary questions. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but been there done that uh, I am a two-time survivor myself and the first time uh, I was like 30 my wife was pregnant we had one child we had only been married a little over a year uh, and it was scary and we found ourselves going through payment books to see what bills would be paid up if I passed mm. and what my new wife and young children will get stuck with and I didn't know anything about the Cancer Society. I didn't have anyone to call. All I had was the internet. My wife was viciously going through trying to find answers. We were scared to death. And we did need someone to just help us 
answer some of the questions that haunted us. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that you did bring up the internet because another really valuable resource is cancer.org and you can we tell people it's a safe place to go mm -hmm. and if you go to cancer.org there's a spot for you to type in your diagnosis and then it's the first thing that comes up is about your diagnosis questions that you can yeah. ask your doctor yeah because no two cancers are the same you know and there's a lot of different things and and there's also a lot of false information you know things that we hear on the street we don't want to hear them on the street. We want to hear them from a clinician. And that's what's on the end of the line. Yep. Uh, people who know what they're talking about. And you need that. You, you need the right answers. It's about navigating safely so that yep. you get the answers that can help you. Right. Um, right. So between the, the 800 number and cancer.org, you get factual, easy to understand information that you can share with family and friends. Now, I have to ask you. Uh, I know there's a hotline. I know there's the internet. Is there face-to-face -face as well? Well, there is. Um, we have um, for specific, specific diagnoses, um, but I just want to backtrack. There, there okay. is face-to-face. -face, yep. And I have folks that call me all the time. But there's so time. many questions that have to be answered before that happens, right? Well, so that's why you... Or I will say to folks, you know, I'm not, that's... I'm not an expert yeah, see, and that, on that. I mean, that's an honest answer. I mean, they're not going to answer every single question. You don't have the answer to every question, but you have the answer to a lot of questions, and questions that need to be answered. Yes. So, so that's, that's good to know. In terms of face-to-face, -face, um, for women diagnosed with breast cancer, mm -hmm. we have a program called Reach to Recovery. And uh, from the moment you call the 800 number and ask, okay. you will be contacted by a trained volunteer who's walked in your shoes, who's close to your age, to share experiences, to be an ear, to listen, mm -hmm. um, who will stay with you and, and be your mentor is not the right word, but your shoulder, yeah, your yes, support right. um, your while advocate. you're going through from diagnosis through surgery. Right. So, so that's very important. Um, another service that we offer uh, everywhere where we can get volunteers to sign up and help us are free rides to treatment. So this is a call for volunteers it as well. It is for our Road to Recovery program. You need a whole lot of people out there doing that. So do you, I mean, you actually answer phones and, or now are you? What In my mean? role right now. Yes. I, I am not the national call-in center. So as I right. said, it used to be. Right. When it was local, folks would say, you know, I, I can call right to my local office. But the fact was, when somebody called the local office, we would have to direct them to the folks who have right. been trained and exactly. have the information at their fingertips. Do I receive calls all the time? All the because time. And everywhere... And you refer them to yes, that's people who can give you the answer. Yeah. And that's... that's People don't understand that that's just as important. You don't have to know everything, but you have to know where to send them to get the information they need. And that's just as important. Right. You know, they, they need to know where to go it's so that they don't just jump online, type in cancer, and start asking questions to this computer. They need someone who is trained to answer those questions and questions that are specific to them. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I, I might get a call from someone who said, you know, um, I just was diagnosed. I know I'm going to need chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. uh, my insurance company will not cover a wig. So we have free wigs. We have a wig room in our New Windsor office wow. um, where folks can come up. But we, we also offer free wigs. You don't have to live in New Windsor to get right. it. We offer free wigs to women who um, otherwise wouldn't have them. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we, and they're not cheap. No, they are not. They are not. Um, we also offer a program called Look Good, Feel Better, which is for folks who are going through treatment. Um, it's volunteer trained cosmetologists who help women and, and sometimes teen girls deal with the side effects of treatment. Yeah. What about things like, uh, say, a single mother has children? Do they help? 
with the children as well? I mean, do they help with some of the responsibilities that they have to face? Well, well we, we have support groups that, that help. Um, and what we do have in our database mm -hmm. is if you call and you were to say such a thing, the person on the other end of the phone would, would go in and say, where do you live? And okay, see what, yeah. this is what's available in your area. Yeah, you, that, can yeah. here, you can That's go wonderful. here, you can That's go here, you can go here. And, you know, it's not, everything is not provided by yeah. the American Cancer Some Society. Some of the things that seem like, duh, are yeah. not. Right. You know, you don't, people don't have those answers at their fingertips. And they just need to be pointed in the right direction. And that's what you do. And, and I know, I told you that, that for me, you, you know, it was just mind boggling. I didn't know where to turn first. I, you know, I told you we, we turned to our, our payment books to figure out, you know, what bills she was going to get stuck with. And people say, you know, that's what you were worried about? You were facing yeah. death? Yes, that was. I didn't want to leave and, and leave her with the burden of two children and a pile of bills. You know, I. I I would have thought of a million things that I needed answered. And that was crowding my brain. And you might have said that to someone on, on the helpline, and they would have said, well, tell me what state you live in, yeah. and we're going to have an insurance advocate call you and an expert. So backing up to the comment that I just said is, we, what we also do is collect information on programs throughout the country in every state so that we can help if it's not a reach to recovery or a road to recovery or a look good feel better program we can still say to you here's what's available in your area and this is how we help you get through the journey so there's certain events and programs and things that you do that you want the public to know about there's things that you want them to be aware of and i know that there's programs all over the place and there's things that you're in charge of. What are some of those things and events that these people you mean are, are like the Relay for Life? Oh, like oh. Relay for Life. Well. Relay for Life just blows my mind. I went to several times in Mahopat, hundreds of people. Thousands uh, of people. I walked the track. Uh, I walked the track with my hero, one of the most incredible people I have ever known, a young man by the name of Sean Callahan. Uh, Janine, you know Relay for Life as much as anybody can know Relay for Life because your son uh, was very much a part of it. Uh, talk to me a little bit about this Relay for Life and what it is. And uh, Your family was very involved in this. You Talk to me about your involvement. Well, you know, it's funny. Our entrance into Relay for Life was, um, it was all because of Sean. And he had heard about Relay for Life from uh, Boy Scouts. And they were talking about how it was a community event and they wanted the children to attend so they could volunteer or help out or, or just be part of it. And Sean came home from Boy Scouts. We had six kids at the time. Wow. I had just had a, a three-month-old. And Sean came home and he said to me, I just heard about this thing. It's called Relay for Life. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. You get to make a team. You get to name your team. You pick people to be on this team, and then you go to the high school, you fundraise. You get everyone is going to get money, and they're going to give it to the American Cancer Society to help people <laughs> like me. Sean was diagnosed with cancer when he was two and fought it until he was four. So at this point, he was nine. Wow. And he said, I want to help people just like me. And he said, it, it's awesome, and there's even something better. You won't believe it. You get to sleep in a tent <laughs> on the field at the I high school. I encampment there. And he uh, just looked so excited, and I was filled with a, a sense of dread, to be I, honest with you. I have to tell those in the audience who don't know, uh, Sean Callahan was a soldier in every way. Uh, he unfortunately lost his battle uh, to, to cancer. Uh, just just about a year ago. Yep. Uh, he was 13? 12 when he died. A tw yeah. 12 when he died. Yeah. He was on this show, and he was wonderful. Uh, he had some pretty incredible things in his life. Uh, he's done things that other kids just haven't done. You know, uh, we, we talk about, you know, some people wait a lifetime for a moment like this. Mm -hmm. He had so many incredible moments. Uh, one was standing 
in front of the crowd, Relay for Life, and facing all those hundreds of people. Now, isn't it true that he was also like number one in New, in New York State for collecting? <laughs> yes, you know, the, the first year that he did it, he was very, he was competitive. He's a competitive child. Oh, in, he was. In, in the best sense. <laughs> Football player. Yes. Uh, in every sense. Every sense. And, but he liked the competition to help people. Yeah. And so his first year, he, he raised a good amount of money, about $4,000. Wow. And the, the, the year that he did make that speech, his last year participating in Relay for Life, um, he did. He, he pulled together the entire community, which is what Relay <laughs> yeah. for Life is. It's a community way to face something that is horrible but in a yep. beautiful and yep. a, a spiritual, yep. it, it touches strength, everything. Everything about him, his aura was just unbelievable. I just felt fortified when I was near that kid. Uh, even on the show, you know, he didn't say a whole lot. <laughs> uh, it was funny, but his face said everything. Mm. His spirit said everything. The kid had a spirit like I've just n never seen. He was just amazing, and it was something that he truly believed in. Uh, I'll never forget the last time he was at that mic when they brought him. He was still not in top shape. They brought him in a golf cart yeah. to that microphone, and he walked up to that microphone as if he owned it. Yep. And when he talked to those people, they listened, and it was just amazing. Well, he had been in the hospital a week yes. before Relay for Life, and he looked at his doctor and he said, you have to get me out of here because I have Relay for Life to attend. And, and I'm, I'm giving going. a speech, and I'm the top fundraiser, and, and I'm attending Relay for Life. And so the golf cart was there to help him so that he could get around the track. Yeah. And you know, the beautiful thing about Relay for Life, and, and it's the purple shirt, that you show up and you sure. get that purple shirt, and Sean loved that purple shirt meant so much to him. Wow. And to walk the track with a bunch of survivors yep. and to be proud of yourself. I know, I yourself, was behind them. It, you know, it's, it's all, the Relay for Life, I think, is, in, in my mind, when I think of it, I think of the community, but I think of the purple shirt. Yeah, I love the term Relay for Life because it's passing the baton. You know, it's, it's, it's people to people. It's concern to concern. And that's really what it's about. It's being able to pass. We have a photo up of Sean uh, in the car. He drove a car, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. That, that picture was Paint Oops. the Town Purple Day. Yeah. 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 But Sean participated. And his brother Michael is, is yeah. sitting in right the there. passenger you know, seat. W what was amazing is that he had wish lists. And the kid went after those wishes and got them. I mean, he, he was a kid you just couldn't hold down. But you would think that children don't have, you know, the so-called bucket list that grown-ups have. But, you know, have, children he did have, have bucket, bucket lists. Lists. They And have. he did, he went after them and he got them. And it's funny because Relay for Life brought life to this kid. Yes. He really believed in what they were doing. And I give the Cancer Society a lot of credit for that, too, because they rally the community. Nobody can rally a community the way Sean Callahan could. And, I, you know, I, I laugh. I remember a comment by the priest who, who said, uh, I wish I could put a portrait of Sean in the, in, in the corridor of the church because when they know he's going to be here, <laughs> we fill the church. He said, we don't have an empty seat when, when Sean's name is involved. And it's true. You know, he knew how to rally a crowd. You know, he had he had cancer, and he, he said to me, you know, Mom, it's not about the cancer. It was about helping people. It was about being yeah. part of a community. Yes, and, and that's not how, giving up. I think that's what draw people to him to Relay for Life, Yep. that it was about something larger. Yeah. And as, as a 12-year-old, he recognized that Relay for Life was about something larger than just his own personal battle. Yeah, and, and that's what, and that's, you know, that's exactly right. I, I think that sums up a lot of things, personal battle. This was his personal battle. And he was willing to take it to the front and to do what he had to do. Instead yeah. of hanging his head and saying, you know, why me? He was like, okay, me, <laughs> you know? And he just did what he had to do. And, you know, when he sat here in this show and, and you know, and I looked across at him, you know, there was, there was even, he smiled 
you know, through a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, there were times, you know, you could tell that this kid was somewhat battle-worn. Yes. Uh, that's why people like Sean need an army behind them. He had an army of friends. Yes. Uh, he had the West Point Army. And the yeah, West the Point Army, which was that amazing. Yes. Uh, that, oh my God, at the funeral, yes. when I looked over, the final blessing was done by? Oh, the Cardinal. The yes. Cardinal. I turned around and I said, oh my God, the Cardinal yes. has come to do the final blessing for this kid. Yeah. He touched hearts. All ages, all sizes, he touched hearts. He was a spirit that will live forever. Thank you. Uh, I just finished my brand new book. It's called Flowers by the Roadside, and it's dedicated to the memory of Sean Callahan, the one of the strongest, bravest spirits I've ever known. Uh, his spirit has to live on forever. And the American Cancer Society makes that possible. Uh, well, we told him, we'll never give up. He never gave up. He never gave up. We'll and, never give up. And, and you can never give up. And it, you, you're right. And that's, I mean, that's what he truly believed. He fought to the very yeah. end. I mean, literally to the very end, right to the last minute. Yes, uh, uh, I know this has to be sensitive to you. Uh, but you have to be proud to be a mother of a kid Oh, like and it's Sean. his passion. And I am so thankful that you have me here to talk about this so that it can continue. Yeah. Because yep. it can't end. I don't ever want him to be forgotten because he was more than a kid. He was a symbol. Yeah. He was a symbol of strength. And he was a symbol of never giving up. And that's, that's who he was. And pulling people together yeah. oh, with you, he not isolating yourself. He could do it yourself. like nobody could do yeah. it. When I looked out and saw that boy at the beginning of that track and all those people behind him, that absolutely put the label on that kid. He was a leader. Mm -hmm. And he drove his own golf cart. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because that, he, you know, I, he was in charge of that did, lap did. and he picked his own music. Yeah. Janine, and he, I will never forget what you said to me. Uh, at the wake when you said he's done so much in his short life more than some people have done in two lifetimes and when I asked him a few days ago if there was anything he still wanted to do he said to ride a dragon and to me that epitomizes who Sean Callahan was what he was saying I think was he has done it all mm -hmm. he had done he, he completed his bucket list. He completed it. He knew what he wanted to do and say. And he left us with the memory of strength. Yep. The cancer will not win. Right. And, and that's who this boy was to me. Uh, you know, I held him at 18 yes. months. Oh. After was, I made you wash your hands I first. Just, <laughs> the funniest thing is, we were in the hall. I, I taught with both... Janine and Dan, and <laughs> she brought Sean to the hospital, uh, to the school, and I ran up and I said, "Can I hold him?" She goes, "Get in there and wash your hands first. You're just touching it with germs." Because already, you know, he had problems with germs. I said, yeah. "Yes, all right." So I ran into the men's room and I scrubbed my hands well, and then she let me hold him. Yeah. So I held this boy for 18 months, yep. you know, and it's just. He has become a very important wow. part of my life. He represents strength to me. So what I'd like you to do is, time is, I told you, time is flying. Talk to me about what can we do? What do we need to do? How can we help you in your fight? Really, I, I am so proud to live in Putnam County. Me and, too. <laughs> you know, we have the Relay for Life of Mayapak and yep. we have the Relay for Life of Patterson. And I, just a little plug that for, for two years in a row, we, we are in the top of the country in per capita fundraising. Wow. And that's not because we have big business or, you know, Putnam County is just a county 
and a community no, of it's folks. It's a community. Yes. Of, people yeah. helping Who people. Who care? Veterans. I, we've had people on this program. I cannot believe how much reach out there is in this community. People helping people all over the place. Uh, we just say, you know, call us if you need us yep. because we're there for you. And I remind the community all the time that we don't, you know, we don't always win every battle. No. And sometimes and when, when Sean, cancer still has the ability to bring yep. us to our knees. Yep. But we get back up and we keep fighting. And when we come together, we're stronger than cancer. At the end of my new book, I say, to everything there is a purpose, a reason for living and a reason for dying. Sean came here for a reason and we can't forget it. It's that we can't give up. That when life beats us, we've got to stand up and fight again. We just cannot give up. Give if up. this 12 year old can do it, we all can do it. And I'd just like to interject quickly. I think Sean's spirit was also don't isolate yourself. Don't yeah. iso be part of a community. Yeah, don't and sit in the corner people. and die. Yes. You need to get up em and make sure your voice is heard to well, the last minute. The memory that I, I, I have decided, for me, my memory of Sean is always of, of healthy Sean. Yep. And he came to a team captain meeting with, with his grandma, Yaya. And he was all sort of folded up in the chair in his big sweatshirt. And we were just getting to know each other. And I said, so you, you have something to say. <laughs> yeah, and he, he looked sure up does. behind his big shaggy yeah. hair and he looked at me and said, yeah, I have something to say. He sure and that does. was really the beginning of our friendship because yep. yep. he, he surely had something to My say. My grandson was on the same Boy Scout troop with him. And I'll never forget when after he joined, he came home and said, Papa, I'm on the same Scout troop as Sean Callahan. And it was like saying, you know, Sean Callahan. He was like a hero in every way. Well, you can be a hero too. Reach out to the Cancer Society. They're fighting for a cause, an incredible cause. The same cause that Sean fought for, the same cause that you should be fighting for. We will not let cancer take us down. Nope. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. You continue the fight. Janine, I know you have a story to tell. Keep telling that story. Yes. Keep that boy alive for all of us. Thank you, Vin. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Stay well and stay involved.